Your presence here is a gift. My name is Anna, and tonight I have the privilege of guiding our evening together. We'll spend the first part of our evening practicing in meditation. This will last about 30 minutes, and I will offer guidance for practice during that time. Then we'll take about a five-minute body break. After the break, I'll share some thoughts on gathering. I'll invite you to sit in contemplation from time to time during this talk. And then I'll invite you to talk with each other. If you're someone who does not wish to speak to others, but wishes to remain present with us, I'll offer guidance on making sure all feel wel welcome. Let's check and see if there's any announcements tonight before we get into our moment of sitting. No announcements? All right. Well, tonight I'd like to offer a practice that um, you're probably, some of you or most of you are familiar with. It's a loving kindness meditation, but this is um, a little bit different in that it is one that is done, offered through Kristen Neff, who is a teacher of self-compassion. Um, and, and it feels particularly lovely to me, so I, I do hope you enjoy it. So again, this meditation is a loving-kindness meditation, and it's meant to generate feelings of goodwill and kindness, both for others and yourself. It's not wishful thinking or wanting things to be other than they are, just trying to set your intention toward kindness. But if at any time during this practice you find yourself feeling too uncomfortable to continue, please make sure to do what feels best for you. You can not listen to me anymore and listen to your own wise heart. So getting in a comfortable position, closing your eyes if you like, or just resting your gaze somewhere softly in front and settling into your seat. And to start with, I'd like to invite you to take three deep breaths to let out any tension from your day, inhaling deeply And exhaling, making sure to let all the air empty from your lungs. And then let your breathing return to normal. Gently noticing where you feel the breath most strongly as it enters and exits your nostrils. As your chest rises and falls. Or perhaps as your abdomen rises and falls. wherever it's easiest to feel your breath. So just focus on your breath for a few minutes, letting yourself become centered and calm.
your mind wanders, that's fine. Just bring your awareness gently back to your breath. Now I'd like you to call to mind an image of someone who's been unconditionally kind to you. Someone who supported you, who's cared about you over the years. Someone with whom you have very uncomplicated feelings. Maybe a mentor, a favorite aunt, a good friend, even perhaps a favorite pet, if that's who comes to mind. Someone you feel safe with. Imagine this person in front of you, how they look, what they sound like, and how you feel in their presence. And if you can, imagine this person is sitting across from you. You're going to send them goodwill and kindness, the wish for their, their well-being. And so repeating the following phrases silently, may you be safe, may you be peaceful, May you be healthy and may you live with ease and well-being. May you be safe. May you be peaceful. May you be healthy, and may you live with ease. And if this person is going through a hard time, feel free to add as possible at the end of each phrase. So silently repeat this to yourself, trying to get in touch with the real, genuine feelings of care, concern, kindness you feel towards this person.
If your mind starts drifting off, just come back to the phrases. May you be safe. May you be peaceful. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. Now see if you can imagine yourself in this person's presence, including yourself in the circle of goodwill. Imagine yourself sitting in front of your person whom you care about so deeply. And then say these phrases to yourself. May we be safe. May we be peaceful. May we be healthy. And may we live with ease. Noting how safe you feel with this person, how much they care for you, and how much you care for them. May we be safe. May we be peaceful. May we be healthy. And we, may we both live with ease. And now shifting again, focus your attention exclusively on yourself. Remembering that you too deserve unconditional kindness, compassion, and caring as all humans do. Allow your feelings of kindness to springboard from the ones you generated for the person you care about. May I be safe. May I be peaceful. May I be healthy and may I live with ease.
May I be safe. May I be peaceful. May I be healthy. And may I live with ease. If you notice you're having any trouble getting in touch with your feelings, you might try putting your hand gently on your heart, feeling the warmth there. May I be safe. May I be peaceful. May I be healthy in mind and body. May I live with ease. If you find yourself distracted or lost in thought, that's fine. Just remember to come back to the phrases and the feeling of care and kindness underlying the wish for goodwill. And now we're gonna shift again. And I'd like you to call to mind someone that you don't really know very well. Maybe you recognize them from your neighborhood or you work with them. You see them at the grocery store. Someone whose story you don't really know. Trying to focus on one person. Remembering that even though you don't know this person well or know their story, they too suffer and want to be free of suffering. That they, like every human being, deserves kindness and care. Imagine this person in your mind's eye and send this person kindness as well. May you be safe. May you be peaceful. May you be healthy. May you live with ease and well-being. Gently repeating the phrases to yourself, coming back to the phrases again and again.
And once again, if you're feeling a little empty or having a hard time connecting to these goodwill wishes, you can put your hand on your heart and let the physical warmth of your hand trickle down into your feelings. May you be safe. May you be peaceful. May you be healthy and may you live with ease. And now let's widen the circle of kindness, caring, compassion. Perhaps thinking of people close to you, your coworkers, your family, your friends, your inner circle of people who you see regularly, including yourself once more. May we all be safe. May we all be peaceful. May we all be healthy. May we all live with ease. Remembering how these people, too, wish you happiness and kindness just as you wish this for them. See if you can allow yourself both to give and receive the goodwill. May we all be safe. May we be peaceful. May we be healthy. May we all live with ease. And again, widen the circle to include people in the city or town you live in. The people who share your community. May we all be safe. May we all be peaceful. May we be healthy. May we live with ease.
even though you know many people are suffering, still wishing them well. Letting the circle widen still broader, broadly, 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 until it encompasses all of humankind with all the joys and sorrows of living this human life. Just wishing, intending, sending the gift of loving kindness to all people. May we be safe. May we be peaceful. May our world be peaceful. May we be healthy. May we live with ease. And see if you can widen the circle even more to include animals and plants, all living creatures. Remembering that you want all living creatures to be healthy and happy. May this earth and all creatures on it be safe. May we live peacefully in harmony May we all be healthy and thriving. May we all live with natural ease. May this earth and all creatures on it be safe. May we live peacefully in harmony. May we all be healthy and thriving. May we all live with natural ease. And for the remaining time, just let yourself rest in the feelings of goodwill, kindness, caring, and compassion that you've generated. Let yourself feel it in your body. And even if you don't feel all of those goodwill feelings, just savor the intention the intention of kindness. And so resting in that for the remaining moments.
May we all be safe. May we all be peaceful. May we all be healthy. And may we all live with ease. So let's take a five minute break. It's uh, 740, so come back at 745. I wanna take a moment to acknowledge the conditions that support our gathering tonight, and those include the people of IMCC who work diligently to keep things going smoothly, including our tech folks tonight. And I want to acknowledge the many teachers of IMCC teachers from across the country and the world who generously share their wisdom for our benefit. And I offer appreciation to the many hands who created this space in which we gather and the land that has nurtured all life and the many peoples who've come before us. Okay, dear Sangha, and dear friends. Tonight I'd like to invite contemplation on why we gather. <coughs> Specifically, why do we gather at IMCC? If we look at IMCC as a whole, our members gather in many different ways. We gather in the young adult Sangha. We gather for noon meditations. We gather in the racial awareness groups. We gather as a board and so on. And we gather on Tuesday evenings in person and in Zoom. But why? What is our purpose as a whole and individually? Now our first answer might be Dharma. We gather because of and in the Dharma. We gather to learn about and share in the Dharma. Now defining what Dharma is would take a whole talk or many, many talks. And it is beyond the scope of our gathering this evening. But a brief definition of Dharma for us tonight from the Encyclopedia Britannica. In Buddhism, Dharma is the doctrine, the universal truth common to all individuals at all times, <coughs> excuse me, proclaimed by the Buddha. Dharma, the Buddha, and the Sangha which is a community of believers, make up the three jewels to which Buddhists go for refuge. Perhaps we gather to be with Sangha. As we heard in the definition of Dharma, we take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. According to Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh, 
A sangha is a community of friends practicing the Dharma together in order to bring about and to maintain awareness. The essence of a sangha is awareness, understanding, acceptance, harmony, and love. We also gather to awaken and to end suffering in ourselves, our family and friends, our communities, and globally. No small intention. And this too is a topic of many, many teachings, ongoing contemplations, and practice. This from Thich Nhat Han. There are people who ask, where can we find the Buddha today? That is very easy to answer. When you can find a Sangha with the practice, with the capacity to generate mindfulness, concentration, and insight, then you have found the Dharma. And then you have found the Buddha. The Buddha is truly present in the Dharma and the Sangha. Another answer as to why we gather might be found in the history of IMCC. We gather to hear the teachings and wisdom from a particular teacher. And maybe there's an element of habit. It's what we've done for a while, so we keep doing it, unawares of why. So for the most part, these are wholesome reasons to gather. But do they capture all the reasons? Is there more to this question? I have heard on several occasions from several people of their experiences coming to IMCC Tuesday evening gatherings for the first time or even for many times, and leaving feeling sad and unwelcome. I find this very important to hear. If indeed we are gathering for the purposes of sharing in the teachings of Dharma, then why would some of our friends leave our gathering feeling sad? If we're sharing together in the teachings of the Dharma, are we not a practicing Sangha? Maybe not. For there's something that we all share, and that's our humanity. And what has been shown in research, and more importantly in our own hearts, truth, is that we gather because we wish to be in connection with others. Connection, it turns out, is the number one predictor of well-being and happiness over time. Connection for each of us looks different. For some, it's being actively engaged in a large group, and for others, it's sharing with a few trusted people. And for others still, it's merely being in presence with others and feeling welcome. Domyo Burke, a bright way Zen, offers this. 
The existence of the Sangha is what makes Buddhism a living, applied, spiritual tradition rather than mere philosophy. Domyo goes on to share that over 2,500 years ago, the Buddha emphasized that associating with what he called admirable people was essential to our success in practice. He defined admirable people as wise practitioners who are firm in their conviction spiritual practice is important and are strong in virtue, generosity, and discernment. The following is a famous passage from the Pali Upada Sutta, and in this passage, Buddha is called the Blessed One. Venerable Ananda went to the Blessed One, and on arrival, having bowed down to the Blessed One, sat to one side. As he was sitting there, Venerable Ananda said to the Blessed One, this is half of the holy life, Lord. Admirable friendship, admirable companionship, admirable camaraderie. Don't say that, Ananda. Don't say that. Admirable friendship, admirable companionship, admirable camaraderie is actually the whole of the holy life. When a monk has admirable people as friends, companions, and comrades, he can be expected to develop and pursue the Noble Eightfold Path. So again, from Thich Nhat Hanh, like a drop of water flowing towards the sea, it knows that it can hardly succeed alone. It could evaporate halfway become a cloud, wander here and there, and never reach the sea. But if that drop of water enters a river and allows the river to embrace and transform it, then for sure it will arrive at the sea. As practitioners, we must allow the Sangha to lead, embrace, and carry us for us to succeed. In my readings for this talk, I ran across an article by Lama Shinpin Hukam entitled The Five Certainties and the Power to Gather. I was moved by Lama Hukam's discussion of connection. She says that these connections we have with others defy time. <coughs> In our usual idea of time, it would just be a moment that came together and collapsed again. But the connections are not in time. The connections are the real part. They are heart connections, something we can rely on, something we can trust. And this doesn't change when the moment collapses. The Sangha jewel is made up of flawed material, human beings like you and me. We are a collection of imperfection. The Sangha is bound to disappoint us and that is an important part of practice.
Thich Nhat Hanh says, to think that we can retreat to the mountains to practice to become a Buddha and do whatever we want because living with humans is complicated and bothersome is a very wrong idea. Therefore, if anyone has that idea, you should let go of it right away. To practice is to always practice with a Sangha. However, if we're living with a Sangha that has many weaknesses and shortcomings, one which does not operate according to our wishes, then we should know what to do in order to help improve the quality of our Sangha. So I'm going to pause there and ask each of you to spend about five minutes, I'll keep the time, individually just sitting and contemplating, why do you gather? Why do you gather anywhere? Why do you gather here? So just taking a moment, I invite you either to close your eyes, keep them open, but just taking some time, about five minutes, I'm going to ask you to just take, take that moment to ask that question over and over for yourself. Why do I choose to gather with others? And just keep asking, why do I choose to gather with others? Noticing what answers arise. And there's no right and wrong answer. You might ask yourself, what specifically, what specifically moves me to gather with someone else, with others? Can you find the answer somewhere in your body? And maybe you have a hard time finding any answer. And that's okay too.
You might even try asking yourself, why are there times when I choose not to gather? And does this help illuminate any as to the choice to gather? Okay, thank you. And so for those who are here in the room, I'd like to invite those who feel comfortable and interested to want to uh, share with others to find two to three people, so two to three people in a group, and maybe move over to this area, and we'll, uh, I'll give you some instructions once you find a group of two or three other people, please. And if you don't feel like you want to share, if you would like to just come to this side of the room and then just rest in presence with us and continue to contemplate for yourself. So if you would go ahead and start moving. And for Zoomers, I'm not going to ask you to um, go into breakout groups, but if you could allow space for each other so everyone has an opportunity to share who would like to, um, and I'll give you further instructions in just a moment. I, I would like to see if we can share, if, if folks feel up to doing that, and I'm gonna invite people in the room, and again, also people on Zoom, and uh, I was wondering if someone wouldn't mind just taking some notes as to um, what we hear. Because I think it would be helpful to know, uh, as a Sangha, why, why do we gather? What is our purpose? Um, so, would anyone be willing to just take, thank you, Kirsten. Now, if you all trust me, I, I'm going to actually step down <laughs> with, thank you, Kirsten. Do you want to hold my hand before? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'll try not to throw the microphone. Ooh, wow. I love when people think outside the box. Okay. So, who feels like they might be willing to share? Why do you gather? Maybe in general or at IMCC? Um, let's start in the room and then we'll move to the Zoomers. Thank you, Ken. I come for the moments of stillness that occur most times when I'm here. Thank you. That feels like the refuge for me. Moments of stillness. Yeah. Why else? Why are you here? How about we'll pass it? Can we do, can we do that? Um, I identified coming for connection, which might seem like an obvious response, but it was shared um, among our group. The desire for connection, shared intention, presence, and not necessarily with knowing background or story. No takers as it, I know, as it went by. 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah. Sometimes. Right. Not to not to speak out loud. Right. I, I just wanted to emphasize what Kirsten said, though, about um, it doesn't necessarily have to be about backstory. Right. Like to be in space with others. And, and that's just enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mary Louise, you want we said a lot of things, but one of them, um, we talked about how it's not always easy to live a conscious life and that people who are coming here are, um, you know, searching and we need support and perspective of others and learning from each other and that we find some uniquely lovely people who are making that plunge and we can do it with them. Well, you said that so well, I don't even think I want to try and, and summarize it because it was, it was beautifully said. But I, I, what I did hear was, um, yeah, being in presence of others, the admirable. Uh, yeah, very good. Thank you. Anyone? Anyone else? I'm almost good. I'm he I think I'm hearing Zoomers, too. Yeah, the, are there folks on Zoom that wanted to share? You know, I teach a class and um, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with just standing and staring quietly for a little while. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Uh, <laughs> one, of, one of the things that came up for me was just the, the simplicity of sharing in this being human journey and all that entails. Ray Louise, enumerated many parts of that but it's it's a wish to to embrace and to be embraced to know and to be known that's so lovely Teresa because I'm I'm feeling that myself that sense of um, of the embrace even even if it's just in the experience of being in space with others. Yeah, welcoming. Thank you. Anyone else? It's an important question. Why do we choose to gather? Why are we here? Why are we here on a Tuesday night? Why did we leave our homes or, or leave our family and tune in? I'll say something. Wonderful. Even as this exercise is illustrating so well, it's to know the, to discover the truth, it takes many perspectives and it takes I can't others. Hear you, David, I'm sorry, so to discover the truth and. It takes many perspectives and lots of interaction uh -huh. with other people. So, so uh, an openness to the voices of many others and perspectives and the wisdom of the many. Thank you, David. Anyone else? It, it, this is Linda. It gets some, often or sometimes I get an insight while I'm meditating with the group. I'm sitting and maybe it's something we said before that's kind of ruminating there. And then I'm just still and trying to breathe and not, you know, et cetera, and let the thoughts go and come. And suddenly, it doesn't happen all the time, but I'll get this big insight, you know, that, oh, well, you know, like outside the box, having to do with something in my personal life. And then the wonderful thing about the Sangha is when we finish the meditating, if there's an opportunity if people want to share anything, and sharing it, for me, makes it more real mm -hmm. and makes it more like it's 
I can use it. It's possible. It's, I don't know, uh, it inspires me and maybe others and, and others do the same thing. Um, so, well, anyway, I hope you get the point. Oh, Linda, thank you so much. Absolutely. Right. I find that a lot myself, too. I think, what, so if I can reflect on what I heard you saying, it was that um, you notice the insight arises that may not have happened if you were not in the presence of others. And then it can become, this happens for me, too. It leaves my head space, if you will, and actually can drop down into a feeling of, of truth. Um, it feels more real when I can talk to other people about it. Thank you, Linda. Well, let me just share a few more thoughts. And thank you for letting me read these out. It just is so much easier for me with um, sharing my thoughts. So this is a time of transition for our Sangha. And in truth, we are always in a time of transition. But sometimes those changes can feel more obvious and more unsettling. There are many hearts and hands working on holding us all as we move through this and trying to assist as IMCC evolves into the next phase of its existence. Your voice and intentions matter and are welcomed in that process. If we have a clearer idea of why we gather, we can have a better idea of how we might gather. Dear Sangha, IMCC gathers because of and in service to each and every one of us. There is no IMCC without all of us. IMCC is not a teacher, a board, any of the many sanghas. It is all of those gatherings and it is your presence. Your presence in the Sangha is an act of generosity. And I'd like to share one more thing from Thich Nhat Hanh. He says, a few months ago while in Plum Village, I had a dream. It was a very simple dream, but it made me very happy. I dreamt that I woke up in the temple or a practice center where I felt very joyful atmosphere. While still lying on the bed, I asked an attendant nearby, what is it that is so joyful? He answered, Dear Thai, a number of brothers and sisters have just returned. We are cooking a pot of rice to eat together. Still in the dream, I sat up, stepped out into the temple courtyard, and did walking meditation. I looked into each orchid, the bamboo grove, every tree and blossom. My heart was filled with joy, as if there was a festival happening because I felt I was living in the heart of the Sangha. There was nothing to it, just a few brothers and sisters returning to the temple, just a pot of rice being cooked so they could eat together, just the orchids and the bamboo in the yard. But why was I so happy? because we still had each other, because we had brotherhood and sisterhood. A simple dream, but it made me happy for many days. It is exactly that brotherhood and sisterhood, that simple happiness which propels us to practice for our entire life. A practitioner also needs food. The key food that helps us to practice our entire life is brotherhood and sisterhood. I'm going to add that perhaps we gather because we're never actually separate in the first place. 
Thich Nhat Hanh says we enter are. When we gather, do we become aware at our core that we are deeply connected with all our imperfections and that we need one another to be? Please consider continuing to contemplate this question of why you choose to gather. And again, may you also remember that you are a vital part of the Sangha. And now as we've come to the end, may our gathering create a ripple of awareness that all beings are connected. May all beings be liberated from suffering and the stormy waves of birth, sickness, old age, and death. And thank you. Thank you for the laughs and the patience and support and your, your presence. <laughs>